Buenas tardes a todos. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being here today at this very important evening. We have with us the General Secretary of the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy from Qatar, Mr. Hassan Al-Thawadi. And he's, and this is why he's here today, he's in charge of coordinating private and public bodies that are preparing the infrastructure for the World Football Championship, which will be held in Qatar in 2022. Thank you, Mr. al -Thawadi. It's a great honor to have you here at Casa Arabe. And we're very proud to have you here because you're organizing the World Cup, which is such an important event. Football is important in everywhere in the world, but in Spain it's even more important. We have good teams, and I think we're, we're one of the major powers in uh, football and in other sports. We've done things well in the area of sports, and we've done really well, as you know. And that's why we're so proud to have you here, and so excited about hearing what you're doing, what you're doing in Qatar, how you're planning the uh, two, 2022 World Cup. The other day, we had the head of the Human Rights Committee from Qatar here, and he talked about the progress made in the area of human rights in Qatar. And maybe one of uh, the most important things has been the changes brought to labor legislation. This reform was driven by uh, the preparation of the World Cup, so I'd like to congratulate you because um, this is uh, progress in the area of human rights, which is uh, across the board in Qatar, and um, I'd like to congratulate you. And we have with us the uh, chair of the... Uh, Football, Spanish Football Federation, uh, Juan Luis. Thank you for attending. We're very proud to have you here. Very pleased to have you here. Juan Luis, thank you. And let me now give the floor to Mr. Al Thawadi, who's going to be speaking in Spanish because, as you'll see when you hear him, he's lived in Spain. His father was uh, ambassador to Spain and he lived here for a short time, but he learned Spanish well. So, uh, thank you. And Juan Luis has the floor first, and then we'll give the floor to Mr. Al Thawadi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Pedro Martinez, the Director General of Casa uh, Mr. Hassan Al Thawadi, Secretary General of the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy for the FIFA 2022 World Cup. I'm, uh, Ambassador from Qatar, ladies and gentlemen. Even if it might seem incredible, we're about to embark in a, on a historic uh, event. It started in Zurich seven years ago when it was decided that Qatar should organize the FIFA 2022 World Cup. As I was saying, that desire is going to soon be a reality for the Arab world. The Spanish Football Federation, from the very outset, supported Qatar, Qatar which it considered a unique place to hold this football celebration. We knew it back then because uh, of the country's growth. It had become an epicenter of modernity, development and innovation, and it was committed to sports. Undoubtedly, some of our sportsmen and women know how committed to sports Qataris are. 
y no voy a pormenorizarlos porque I'm not going to go into the details but los vínculos entre el mundo árabe the ties between the Arab world and Spain are well known they're very strong and they encompass all aspects of life their world and our world have walked along many paths hand in hand we've discovered the lights that uh, could be brought about by common understanding. This has happened for centuries, so it should come as no surprise that uh, the election of Qatar was uh, very satisfactory to us. We're uh, friends with uh, everyone, but especially with the Arab world. 108 years ago, the Spanish Football Federation was set up. 50 years later, we saw the beginning of Arab football federations, which have grown significantly since then. During these 100 years, we've shown that football was one of the great passions of our people. We um, have a great track record in all specialties. In 1964, we won our first European War, uh, Cup in 2008 and 2012, the two next ones. And uh, we reached our zenith with the 2010 in South Africa. We could add many, many tournaments, the gold medal in 1992 at the Barcelona Games. European uh, championships, both uh, female and male championships, uh, five-a-side football, and um, the Maurice Bourlas trophy ten times, and we received an award for being the, 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 the best uh, European federation. We won an under-17 championship uh, three days ago in Calcutta in India, and um, we're very proud of what we've achieved, and because it's been based on quality, but also on sacrifice and unity. And by being happy, we made others happy. Among them, fans from the Arab world, millions of them. In the at FIFA, the family of football, we say that football is the strongest bridge between different religions and cultures, and that's a very beautiful thought, but it's also true. Football has brought together people in conflict areas. Uh, has established contacts, has helped establish contacts and friendships. Since 1930, there are world uh, championships. Only one has been held on the African continent, South Africa, in South Africa in 2010. And we were fortunate enough to win the World Cup, and we would like to do that again in Qatar in 2022. Of course we would, but first there is Russia 2018. We just classified for that. And this last qualifi uh, qualification has made the Arab people very happy. We know that our clubs are very popular in Qatar. There are a lot of fans there. We have lots of uh, Arab fans living in Spain who support our team, and we celebrate that. The road to Qatar 2022 is extremely exciting, and it's been that way since the beginning. That uh, World Cup will strengthen their football, and also the idea that uh, the future is very bright for us. Qatar was already uh, hosted the uh, 1988 Asian Cup, the 2006 uh, Cup, the um, track and field games, the Pan Air Games in 2011, and another uh, Qatari tours. And this will bring another very valuable peace to uh, the passion for sport in Qatar and to its capacity to host sporting events. We're sure that the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 will be a global success. It's, Qatar's bid was a success, and the pace of work has also been very successful.
desde aquel 2 de diciembre de 2010, cuando Qatar fue escogido, hemos visto la capacidad de Qatar para organizar eventos de alto nivel de deporte. Señores, de alta nivel de deporte, hemos compartido este proyecto con la misma intensidad que el país árabe, que es un país muy cercano a España. Gracias. Muy bien. Thank you. Muy bien. Tiene la palabra, por favor, señora. Thank you, Mr. Althawadi. Now has the floor. Señor Juan Luis Larea, presidente de la Real Federación de Fútbol. The Spanish Royal Federation of Football. Embajadores. Ladies and gentlemen, ambassadors, distinguished guests here in Casa tonight, ladies and gentlemen, welcome and good evening to you. Before starting my speech to you this evening, I would like to say how happy I am to be here with you tonight to form part of the celebration of the 10th anniversary of Casa Arabe here in Madrid. I'd like to thank the Director General of Casa Arabe, Mr. Pedro Martinez Fabial, and everybody working with the Director General for their invitation to me and their welcome to me today. And I'd also like to congratulate him on the running of this center, which is a bridge between Spain and the Arab world. Here in Casa Arabe, hosting the event tonight, representatives from the world of culture, the economy, finance, politics, art, music, and many other facets of our life meet to breathe life into the idea of coexistence. I'm very proud to be able to speak to you today I'm in a city and in a country that has great meaning for me. I lived uh, for a number of years in this beautiful city during some very special years of my childhood. It is symbolic that um, amongst the themes that have been selected to celebrate these 10 years of work in Casa Arabi, there is the theme of coexistence. In these uncertain times uh, that we are living in now, I think it is both a valuable theme and a timely one. The idea of coexistence is much more than a historical concept for me. It is the simple fact of living together and in peace with mutual respect and uh, welcoming and embracing diversity, in my view, Nothing represents this idea so clearly and so effectively as when we see a group of young people who get together to play football. Through sport, we learn how to dream and we learn how to try to better ourselves. And we realize that you have to work very hard to do that. I was very moved uh, by a story of an Afghan child. He was just six years old. Uh, the, the picture of this young Afghan child uh, became very famous uh, in the social media. Mutasa, tiny Mutasa, made a a football shirt out of a plastic bag and with the number 10 of Lionel, Lionel Messi on the back. And when he actually met Messi in Doha last December, it was a dream that, that seemed impossible that came true. The expression of happiness, of joy in, that, in this young child's um, face uh, showed you the power of connection that football has. Thanks to that sport, people anywhere and everywhere, all over the world, uh, and without being able to speak the same language, can be in touch. Uh, and do not need to have met before. That is the force of football. It's a power that knows no frontiers, that brings us closer together and opens up the doors to one and all. Sport is a platform where the principle of coexistence becomes crystal clear. This World Cup in Qatar represents an opportunity for the region and especially for the young people who are our future. In Qatar, we believe in mutual respect and in the principle of coexistence. We are a mosaic of people from different nationalities, creeds and cultures who live together and in harmony. In the organization that I am privileged to be in charge of, there are people working in our organization from 54 different nationalities, but all with a common vision. 
During the current times uh, with regional tensions, we do hope that the relationship, the relations between my country and our neighboring countries can return to normal again through dialogue, but with respect for the independence of each nation. And as always, we have demonstrated that it should be done peacefully. Just as His Highness, the Emir of Qatar, said the crisis, uh, the outcome of this uh, illegal and unjustified blockade should be resolved through dialogue. Even though there are differences and it would seem to be easier to build walls in a tough reality for some and full of pain for others, allow us to say that this World Cup carries with it a message of peace to show the world the potential that we have to provide stability for young people today. Our region is facing, in the next decade, one of the major challenges of our times. In the Arab world, 30% of the population is aged between 15 and 29. According to the latest report from the United Nations, uh, on population, we have the challenge of creating 60 million jobs before 2030. When we stood as a candidate country to host uh, the first FIFA World Cup in the Middle East, uh, we wanted to take full advantage of the force that only football has to unite uh, us all and to use it as, as a spur to achieve change. Uh, right from the outset, we have been working to make sure that the World Cup can have a transformational effect in our region. Back then, almost eight years ago now, Everybody thought that we were dreamers, and I have to say that that perception of us, we actually liked that. From the very early days, we have endeavored very hard to convert those ideals into reality, those challenges into opportunities, and that capacity to do so is one of our strengths. We have created study centers uh, such as the Jasur Institute. Jasur is an Arab word that means bridges. And it is an institution that is helping to generate in the sports industry young professionals who are able to actively form part of the development of the region despite the harsh realities of where they come from. I'd also like to share with you this evening the story of a, a young boy from Yemen, Bada al-Baram. Bada managed to overcome serious difficulties in a country devastated by war and traveled to Qatar. He even had to sleep in his car on the border to be able to finish his studies. His story shows us what the young people from this region, from my region, are willing and ready to do to have a better future. Our region and our young people have so much to offer, and, and even though they do have so much to offer, they still have to fight on a daily basis against stereotypes, and we would like to be able to guarantee to them that this World Cup will provide that economic and social legacy for them that will be long-lasting over time. In this respect, we have understood that, that the football has the power to do so, and that is why we encourage our young people to play an active role in setting up innovative enterprises to become the leaders and the central figures of the future. That is why we've set up Challenge 22. This is a regional innovation award to support People who uh, have um, ideas uh, for creative enterprises to develop their ideas and, and to turn them into viable solutions. Our program, Generation Amazing, for the development through football, shows the transformational power of this event and it goes beyond the Arab world. One good example for you is the case of Uzma Sharif. After forming part of our program, this young girl from Pakistan successfully set up the very first women's football league in her place of origin, and now she is a community leader. At the same time, and apart from these projects that we are developing, we are moving forward very quickly 
on the construction of the infrastructure that we need for 2022 with the very first stadium that was completed in May this year and another two that will be ready by the end of 2018. And in 2020, all of the stadiums will be completed as stated uh, and scheduled in our program. We're also building three metro lines that will join up the sports facilities and will allow the football fans to be able to go to two or three matches in the same day. It will be the World Cup of Innovation, the most compact and connected tournament ever seen. The construction of this infrastructure will not only be there for the 30 days of the, of the football in the World Cup, but rather it will form part of our national development plan for future generations. That is why we're working day in, day out, every night, every moment in time to be able to contribute to the future of our people. And we're going to continue to do so, so that the legacy of the World Cup does not finish in 2022, but it is long lasting and will benefit and be something that will do good for young people like Murza, Badur, Usma, and many others of their generation. We have a dream. We know that this is a big dream, a difficult dream, and it represents a huge challenge for us, but we but we will let nothing stand in the way of that dream. It is true that we are dreamers, but just as in the case of the best football players in the world, we have our feet firmly on the, on the ground. Qatar has always had huge ambitions and we will continue to have them. History has been written thanks to those people who have had big dreams and let nothing get in the way of those big dreams. That is why I would ask you today to accompany us and to share that dream with us, for us, for our young people and for our future. Thank you very much. Thank you to Casarabi for giving me this opportunity to be here. Thank you to all of you.